today is Wednesday, September 6th, and we are talking about lesson 1.10. Module 1, lesson 10. Martin asked a really good question today. He said, Miss O, wouldn't 1.10 in decimals just become 2? In the place value system, would that become 2? Yeah. yeah. But the way our math lessons work is it's not the, the place value system. It's just the module and then the lesson. So we're going to go all the way up to 1.16 in module one. And some modules will go all the way up to like third, what, 2.32 or something like that. Okay, so it's not the place value system. But I love the way Martin was trying to think about how he could relate this to what he knows about the place value. So thumbs up. Okay, your learning goal today is similar to yesterday. And yesterday you were using what you knew about place value to add decimals. And today you're going to use what you know about place values to subtract decimals. The standard way of splitting the number is splitting it with the whole number part, 76, and the decimal part, 358 thousandths, yes? But that's not the only way we could split that number. Could we split it with having one part be this, just the 7 and the rest be 6,358? We sure could. We just have to write the place values. This would be 7 what's? 7 tenths. tenths. And then 6,358 thousands very good so we can say that this number is also called seven tens and six hundred or sorry six thousand three hundred fifty eight thousandths yes yeah. this is what unit form is all about it's splitting the number in different ways but saying the place value okay we could also split it like this we could say it's seven hundred sixty three what's tenths. tenths and fifty eight thousandths good Okay, what about this last one? It's something hundredths. How many hundredths at eight thousandths? Well, that would be splitting it at up until the hundredths. So how many hundredths are there? Seven, And then eight hundredths. Oh, sorry, eight thousandths. Do you see how you could split it in many different ways? Yes. What's the most important thing to write when you are splitting it in this many different ways? Sonatin? The place. You got it. If I didn't write tens or thousandths or thousandths here or tenths or hundredths or thousandths, would I know what number I'm talking about? No. No. So it's very important when you're talking about unit form to include the place value units. Okay. If I have five tenths and I want to take away three tenths, I can model this using pictures. I can draw five, place five dots in one of these columns. If I have five tenths, where should I draw five dots? In the tenths, tenths column. So one, two, <laughs> Three, four, five. Do you agree that I've modeled using a picture five tenths? Yes. I agree too. Now if I want to take away, subtracting means to take away. If I want to take away three of those tenths, how many do I have left? Two. Two, two what's? Two tenths. Good. And I can write that in standard form like this, two tenths. Now standard algorithm just means that you are writing the numbers vertically in the place value chart. So would this be the same as if I have five tenths and I want to subtract three tenths? Are those numbers lined up in my place value chart? Are my ones on top of each other? Yeah. Are my decimal points on top of each other? Yeah. Are my tenths on top of each other? Yeah. They sure are. So the answer is two tenths. So this over here on the left is how you model it using pictures. And on the right is how you model it using the standard algorithm. This time, if I have seven ones and five thousandths, what dots should I draw and where should I draw them? Well, I want to draw seven dots in my ones column. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And five dots in my thousandths column. One, two, three, four, five. If I'm using standard algorithm, I can write this number like this. I have seven ones and five thousandths. Do you agree? Okay, now I want to take away two of those ones. So I'm going to cross out two of those ones. And I also want to take away three of those thousands. So I'm going to cross out three of those thousands. Over here with my standard algorithm, I'm going to write my one. I'm going to make sure my ones are lined up. So I have two ones that I'm taking away and three thousands that I'm taking away. Are all my place values lined up in my standard algorithm? When I had five thousands over here and I took away three, how many thousands did I have left? Two. two. How many hundredths did I start with and how many did I take away? Zero. Zero. So how many do I have left? Zero. Okay. And what about tenths? How many did I start with and how many did I take away? Zero. Zero. And I 
seven ones to begin with, and I took two away, so how many ones are left? Five. Five. So as you can see, over here is how you model it with pictures, and over here is how you model it with numbers. Did I forget something very important in my answer down here? Yes. What did I forget? If I, don't ha if I don't write the decimal point, the decimal point's here. That means my number 5,002. Is that what I want? No. I want to put the decimal point right here, so I have five and two thousands. Do you see how the decimal point kind of puts all the numbers in order? It puts them in the right place, right? That's why it's called the place value chart. Sometimes, instead of having a number, we might see a unit form or a word form, 83 tenths. Does that mean I should draw 83 dots inside my tenths column? No. Can I already regroup in my head? Yeah. I know that 83 tenths is the same as what? Ah, okay. So what I could do is I can think in my head that 83 tenths is the same as eight ones and three tenths. So I can draw eight dots in my ones column. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three tenths. Okay. Now, what do I want to take away? How many ones do I want to take away? Six. Six. So I can cross away, cross out two, three, four, five, six ones. How many ones do I have left? I have two ones left. Do you see that? Yes. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to talk about the tenths. I want to take away how many tenths? Four, four. four tenths. Uh-oh, but I only have three dots. What do I need to do? Ani? I need to carry it somewhere. I need to carry it somewhere? Where do I carry it? To the, near, near. Am I carrying something somewhere? No. Ani, thanks for letting me give you a hard time. Because this is a mistake that a lot of people make. They say, I'm going to carry the tens. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Where are you going to carry them to? To my house? I don't need them. Thank you. We're not carrying anything. We're not minusing or adding anything. We're just simply renaming or regrouping. Here's how you show it using pictures. Watch carefully. In order to show that you're regrouping, you're going to circle the one that you are regrouping, and you're going to cross it out. Then you're going to show an arrow over to the next adjacent place value, and how many do I need to draw? Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By drawing this, you're showing that you're regrouping one ten as ten tenths. Now, how many ones do I have left? One. One. So write that. And how many tenths do I have all together? No, no. How many tenths do I have all together? 13, but I need to subtract 4, so I'll cross out 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. How many tenths do I have left? 9. So is my answer 1, 9? No. 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 1.9. 1. Very good. Now let me show you what this would look like with the standard algorithm. If I have 83 tenths, I'll write the number 83, but I need the rightmost place value to be in the tenths column. So what does that mean? I have to put the decimal point right here. That means I have 8 ones and 3 tenths. I'm going to subtract 6 ones and 4 tenths. I need, before I can even subtract using standard algorithm, I need to double check. Is everything lined up? Are my ones place lined up? Yes. Are my decimal points lined up? Yes. Are my tenths lined up? Yes. That means I'm ready. I can do regular subtraction now. I can think to myself, three minus four is negative, so I don't want that, so I need to regroup or rename. I'm gonna subtract one of those. Now I only have seven ones, and instead I'm going to change that into 10 tenths, add it to the 13, or to the three I already have for 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. So if I had 13 tenths minus 4 tenths, I have 9 tenths left, which is exactly what we showed here using the pictures. You see that? And I have 7 ones. I want to subtract 1, or 6, sorry, so I'll have 1 left. And that is exactly, do you guys see how the dots are exactly what's happening over here with the numbers? Good. Okay, first thing we need to write down is what is the question asking? What is the question asking us to find out? Is it asking how much a marker costs? No. no. Grant, what is the question asking? Is it wait, 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 is it asking us how much the marker costs? No. We're trying to figure out how much change Ken should get. Change is the money you get back when you give extra money, right? When you buy things. Good. If we need to write down number one, how much change should Ken get? Then we need to figure out what important information do I need in order to figure out how much change 
Ken should get. Martin, what do I need to know? Okay, we need to know that the pen costs two dollars and nine cents. Does the pen cost less than the marker or the marker costs less than the pen? Pen costs. Yeah, so the marker is 54 cents more than the pen. Then we need to know that Ken paid for one pen and one marker with a what kind of bill? Five dollar bill. And we need to use a tape diagram, which we learned about yesterday, to figure it out. Here's how you can do it. Remember, a tape diagram is just a piece of tape that you're drawing. And if this tape diagram with labels, okay, if you just draw that, that's not a tape diagram. In order for a tape diagram to be a tape diagram, you need labels, right? Now, if this is all the money that Ken paid with, how much money is that altogether? Five dollars. So you're going to label this five dollars. Five dollars and zero cents. Okay. What's one thing Ken bought? A pen. a pen. So let's mark that. Let's write that he bought a pen. And let's label. How much did the pen cost? Two dollars and... Nine cents. What else did Ken buy? A marker. The marker should be a little bit bigger than the pen because it costs a little bit more. How much did the marker cost? It cost two dollars and nine cents plus plus fifty four. Yeah. Now this rest of this area here in this five dollars is that the change that he should get back? Yeah. So is that what we're trying to figure out? To answer the question, okay, so you're going to label that with a question mark. That's the amount we're trying to figure out. So if I know that this section over here is $2.09 and over here is $2.09 plus 54 cents, how can I figure out what this part is? I can do $5, the total amount, right, oops, I can do the f total amount of $5 and I can